when you go through the nominations for these finalists this year, all you can think about is the tremendous value that journalists bring, the service that they do. I really like to think that Anthony would have been proud to have his name associated with this work. He always loved to celebrate great journalism. What he saw as things that were uh, courageously reported and well-written. It's refreshing to see people making these choices and, and be so, so courageous in their reporting and yet so caring toward the people that they may affect. Uh, the Chinese government the last couple of years says that Islamic extremism, uh, Islamic militancy, separatism have sort of taken root in Xinjiang among the Uyghurs. It's been, these ideas have been coming in from the Middle East. And because of that, um, the government has rolled out this massive uh, sort of surveillance and policing campaign over Xinjiang. Some overseas experts um, have basically called it an unprecedented uh, police state, uh, something that we haven't seen before. At the end of the day, uh, we simply had to go, we had to get the story out. Um, and a lot of overseas Uyghurs have told us because the government has sort of uh, enforced this sort of perfect uh, information bubble. We were really, uh, as foreign journalists, the only ones who could have gone and sort of told the story uh, about what was really happening there on the ground. I interviewed 29 Rohingya women and girls who said they were raped by Myanmar security forces. Um, they were all interviewed individually. They came from various parts of the refugee camps in Bangladesh. They came from a wide variety of villages in Myanmar, and yet their accounts were strikingly similar. Were, most of them were quite eager to talk, uh, even though it was extraordinarily painful for them. And a lot of that was because this was the first opportunity many of these women had been given to tell anyone about what they had endured. There was one woman who spoke about this in a very eloquent way. Uh, she had been raped, her husband had been killed, she had to leave her house and her country behind with her young daughter. And I asked her if she was okay with me sharing that with the world, and she said yes. Uh, she said, I have nothing left, all I have left are my words. And, and that's our duty, it's to shed light on things that are happening in the dark and make sure that people understand what, what is happening to someone who otherwise wouldn't be able to tell you themselves. I discovered in the course of this story that there are thousands of children of Catholic priests all over the world living often in silence and sorrow, uh, pretty much wherever the Catholic Church has a presence. Uh, many of the children of Catholic priests did not want their names used in the story. And I was just not going to write a story that didn't use names. It does take time to, to talk to people and listen to their concerns and prepare them for what it might be like to have their story published in the Boston Globe. Uh, I think it's very satisfying to write a series of stories that really addresses a great wrong in our society. The United Arab Emirates has been engaged in systematic torture of hundreds of men who were detained in secret prisons in southern Yemen. U.S. officers were engaged in interrogating these suspects. We started by speaking to families and to former detainees. It was very hard for them to break the wall of silence. One of our main characters, we asked him to take off his shirt, cover his face, change his voice, and then we had his full account of what he saw inside the prison, all the torture, the detention, what he saw about Americans' involvement. Uh, last year, uh, Reuters decided to investigate uh, the body trade, which is the body broker market. Uh, people donate their bodies to science. So this industry is completely unregulated, and there's really, it's really done in a matter of trust. And we wanted to find out how regulated or unregulated it was. The only way really to do this was to try to buy body parts ourselves. We d were able fairly quickly to identify um, the person whose spine it was, and unfortunately it came from, from the body of, um, of a 24-year-old uh, named Cody Saunders who had lived a very, very difficult life. So this is one of the hardest stories I know that Brian and I have ever, ever tried to do. I think when you hear from these journalists uh, who are finalists this year and the care that they took in working with the people who gave them information and people who would be affected by their reporting, it ties directly to who Anthony was as a reporter. It's very important that 
that the reporters have the kind of relationship and develop the trust necessary uh, that the sources understand that they're consenting to the interview, but do they really understand what that means? I explained to them that the story would have much more credibility, much more credibility, much more impact, and was much more likely to get a response if people used their names. And I was concerned that even if they said, yeah, go ahead and use my name, they might not realize that their words could be seen by the entire world. Sometimes the inf information environment today feels so chaotic that we can lose sight of important stories. You know, they're here and gone. This award is a chance to stop and say, it doesn't have to be gone. It's really important, valuable work for us to all appreciate. It's really worth the time to talk to people who may have been marginalized uh, and listen to their story and investigate whether there is a systemic wrong being done here that can be corrected through journalism. I see in people who go into this field in general exactly what I saw in this year's finalists, and that's people who genuinely care about what's going on and want to improve the situation of the people around them. They want to tell stories that aren't easy, not for their own good, but for our collective good. Um, of course, as a reporter, you always want to uh, pr uh, publish as many details, as much color, um, as much information as possible to bring these characters to life. But I also wanted them to have a break from talking about these awful experiences and to see that I saw them not just as the product of a trauma, but as a whole human being. We try to, uh, you know, to, to honor Cody's gift and uh, you know what he intended by um, uh, by doing it in the way we did and also in the way that we um, wrote the story. I also hope that when we highlight work that matters, it encourages organizations to invest in more work that matters. It's, it's an acknowledgement that what you've done is important and keep doing it. I really don't hear people referring to journalism as a job. It's much more of a calling and you certainly felt that when you talked with Anthony. He was truly humble about what he felt he was called to do. And I think that's a legacy that we should carry on. And I think it's a story that we need to continue to tell about him.